the assembly module, here you can um, create instances which are the bodies who are uh, analyzed during simulation. We learn about the position and the manipulation of these bodies or objects in our total assembly. Some useful um, functions of the Abacus GUI. So let's take a look. Okay, so um, let's talk about the assembly model here in the Abacus GUI. If we expand the assembly, we see we have something like a subtree for the assembly because what exactly is the assembly? In many other FEM softwares, you create what you run to simulate. This is not so much the case for Abacus and it's quite useful. For example, if you have a car and you create a chassis and, uh, but you also are interested in uh, the analysis of the tires. Now you know, okay, all the four tires are the same, so why would I create four tires? What you do in Abacus is you create one tire at a, as a part and then you create four instances of this uh, body or of this part. So it saves you time if you have um, more than one times the same part in your entire model. So the assembly is really what you later will simulate. In our case, um, we double click on instance. We just have, we only want to analyze one times our beam part. So we click on apply and we see that uh, the instance is created here, but we could create more than one instant of the same beam. And that is that explains why it has the similar options as um, the part menu over here. So you also see sets, surfaces, and you would also <clears throat> have the option to um, do a meshing here if you didn't define a meshing before. Because, for example, in, in our tire example, you could be interested in have four different meshes on these four tires or you're interested in a specific, the analysis of a specific surface on just one of these four tires. So this is why it gives you the same option here in the assembly module again. But in our case, creating one instance and not redefine any surfaces or sets is sufficient for our case. What you can also do in the um, assembly module is you can move it around. So think about Lego a little bit. If you have these four tires, or in our case the beam, and you want to move it to a different position, you can, for example, use the translate instance uh, option. And then you select the instance, you click on done, or the mouse wheel, and then it's important to understand now how this translation, for example, works. Um, it follows a vector. So this vector has a starting point, for example, 0, 0, 0. You click enter, and um, if you want to move it by 1, 1, 0, you just type 1, 1, 1, 0, and then um, according to your global coordinate system down here, it, had, it has moved by one in x direction and one in y, in y direction. Um, I just uh, bought this for a second. What you can also do, uh, the same applies for rotation. Here, first you have to define <coughs> a rotation axis. For example, if it's uh, supposed to be the x-axis, it goes from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 0, 0. And then angle of rotation, so right thumb rule, 90 degrees will project it downwards, right? So your right thumb is the vector that you just defined. And um, yeah, can go back and change the whatever you wanted to do. If you click on the X, it undoes every <coughs> operation you have done so far. You can create some patterns using this multiple instances uh, approach. One very useful thing here is this option. It's the translate to option. Uh, we don't have to use it right now. We will use it later, but I want to introduce it right here. 
because in especially in metal forming simulations where you start with dies and um, work pieces very closely to each other you should still have a gap in between the two this gap shouldn't be too large because this is a waste of computational time because um, before the, guy, the die and the workpiece come into contact, nothing's happening. Um, however, there should be a small gap so that the contact algorithm, we will later talk about this, um, can find the contact uh, properly. So this translate to, usually I can maybe demonstrate it with a, uh, by creating a second instance. So now I have two beams. I hope you can follow what I'm doing. Just to demonstrate, I translate one of the beams. I move it upwards. So I start at 0, 0, 0. I move it to 0, 20, 0. Now it should hover above the other one. Yes, we can, we can see this. And now I want to use this um, translate to option. And uh, here, in this case, if I click on Translate to, it asks me the movable instance. The face, I usually choose the face which is moved. So it would be this face. And then uh, I choose the face of the fixed instance to which it will come into contact. So this would be this face in this case. Now we have to define the translation vector, the direction of the contact. So uh, in our case, it will go in negative y direction. So we start at 0, 0, 0, and then we go to 0, minus 1, 0, because the upper instance is uh, desired to move downward, coming closely into contact to the fixed instance instances down here. Okay, now it shows us this yellow arrow here. And now I can define this clearance that I just talked about. For example, 0.1 millimeter. I can click on preview. So there should be a very, very, very small uh, gap, which you can barely see. So maybe we can uh, have a little bit bigger. Um, now, yeah, now you should uh, really be able to see the small clearance, this gap. And uh, this is very useful when positioning uh, dies and work pieces at the beginning of a simulation. So use these options to bring them as close as possible in contact, but don't make them start in contact because this will cause a lot of problems regarding um, the initial contact finding. In our case, we don't need this, so we can uh, delete the second instance of our beam.